Today, we live in a world of networks. We live in a social network with close ties, tight ties to people in our local communities and in our country. Maybe we have loved ones that live far away. We also have weak ties, professional ties, that bind us to others all the way across the world. We also have ties of knowledge. We have claims and counterclaims about how the world works. What I want, what you want. Together, these things are being monitored online, almost on a continuous basis. Now, these networks, certainly they're important for scientists and engineers, but if you're a good citizen, if you're concerned about design, you should be monitoring these things too. You are monitoring them. Now, in truth, our networks are diverse. They incorporate lots of knowledge, and as a result, our networks today, they know far more than we do. Wouldn't it be nice if we could monitor these networks, if we could gain the wisdom of the crowd of those people that are in our networks? Well, that's what I'd like to talk to you today about. I'd like to tell you about how we can hack these networks, get a little ahead of the curve, find out what's going on in the newest developments in science and technology. Now, I told you I'm going to speak to you about technology, so in that light, I want to give you a, a few brief messages about the nature of complex technologies. Today, technologies are increasingly modular. This en enables us to design and develop high-value goods and services. And when we design modular technologies, we also need more modular organizations. Truly radical technologies do two things. They involve new components. Now, we're doing a pretty good job of finding new components. But they also involve putting those components together in new and unexpected ways. Now, this is where the real challenge lies. How are we going to do this? How can we find new, t new components being put together in new and surprising ways? Consider that the internet today is actually quite predictable. It's being driven from the top down. By and large, it's being driven from the top down. We have thought leaders and we have followers, and we have followers of followers. And the idea is propagate down this network, not just one idea, but often a whole constellation of ideas. Sure, the network forgets something, introduces some errors, but this is a messy pattern, and the way we experience is unpredictable and noisy. But it turns out that we can do a much better job of finding the patterns in this network. We can do a lot better Pat, uh, uh, we can do a lot better job of discovering the new and radical ideas, the things that aren't being copied, the new and novel combinations there uh, on, in our online networks, and, and we can watch what's happening in real time. Consider this messy real-world network. If we could look at this network and we could say, who are the real originators of the ideas? Where's the, where's the noise and where's the redundancy? Can we get rid of it? Can we find the patterns? If we could do that, if we could cut out the links, we could cut out the unnecessary parts, we would eventually find two things. We would find a top-down structure. This is important, this is useful, but these are the followers and the leaders that I was telling you about. These are the, these are the idea authorities and those people who, who, who follow them. But we would also find a pattern of important and cross-cutting ideas, the new and the more surprising connections. Can you find these links? Could I? No. But... Happily, this is the thing that computers are best at. I am using some ideas from Aaron Clausett at the Santa Fe Institute for Complexity, and he's created algorithms that will continuously monitor, using machine learning and other techniques, these patterns online on, on our behalf. Now, you might say, online monitoring of data, authoritative sources, don't we have that already? Isn't that called Google? In truth, Google's doing something very different. Google is all about authorities. Google says who out there are the experts on the topic and who are the experts talking about. The experts talk about the experts, and when you're done, you end up with a short list of the most, most important ideas out there. Now, this is very useful. Google does many things, and it's extremely useful to us, but it's reinforcing the hierarchy. It's taking the existing patterns, and it's spreading it forward. We can do other things. We can find novel, unique, interesting, and different links and bring them forward to, to get more attention. I've used these ideas to investigate what's happening in Ajax. You may know Ajax as the technology behind Google Maps 
that fluidly and continuously gives us new visions of the world, new views of the world at all scales. I've also used it to investigate what's happening in green buildings and in LEED certification, discovering that there's a relatively small group of people, uh, consultants, who are promoting green buildings and enabling us to, to become more sustainable as a society. I have colleagues in the automotive industry who today are extremely interested in what's happening in hybrid vehicles and what's happening in electric vehicles that are working to produce sustainable vehicles for us. What they tell me, you know what, today we have everything we need for the electric vehicle. It's just finding the design, finding and agreeing upon the design that will create these vehicles for us. And finally, I'm working with the European Commission on the future of big data. The Europe is extremely concerned and interested about what these technologies, what these machine learning technologies will give us, what opportunities and what threats they will present to us. Do hyperlinks undermine hierarchies? Someone once said this. Today, they don't. Today, our hyperlinks, our connections online, are just reinforcing existing patterns of thought. But imagine that when these technologies, too, help us find the new ideas become available, our inboxes will be filled with the newest discoveries. Our blog rolls will be telling us about the newest experiments, about combining technologies together in new, surprising, useful, and valuable ways. Our news will no longer be needless chatter, but it will contain the seeds of revolution. So, when this happens, the Internet will no longer be such a top-down place. It will be much more flat, and we will be able to discover the, the most valuable new ideas. This will benefit you, both you and I and bring to a new age of discovery. Thank you.